Good morning, friends. I am now going to discuss on Reserve Bank of India and the Deposit Insurance Credit Corporation of India. These two are the parts of your second unit of uh, you know banking law. Uh, what are the reasons, or rather, what were the reasons for the passing of uh, you know Reserve Bank of India? There was a time when in the world, almost in all the countries, there was a, a hue and cry for you know constitution or establishment of a central bank in each and every country. And uh, in order to constitute the same you know, central bank in a country to you know, regulate, to control, to supervise financial and monetary policy of the country, economic structure of the country, the you know, uh, Royal Commission on Currency and Finance was constituted in the year 1925, you know, popularly known as, under the chairmanship of Hilton Young, popularly known as uh, you know, Hilton Young Commission, Royal Commission on you know, Currency and Finance. In order to, uh, that particular commission was formed. Hilton Young Commission is a popular name for that. And that commission you know, was formed in order to look into and uh, you know, study uh, what best uh, you know, mechanism for you know, control and uh, regulation of the you know, country's finance or uh, uh, for framing uh, you know, economic uh, you know, policies etc what best uh, you know central bank could be formed and how it could be formed with all what with i mean being the custodian of uh, you know finance and economy of the country then it should be you know a comprehensive you know mechanism and it should not be short of any you know provisions therefore hilton young commission was formed in order to study the same and it was given time to submit the report after uh, you know studying the same and uh, the uh, Hilton Young Commission upon the study not only you know the country's economic uh, you know structure but also upon perusal of uh, the different uh, you know central bank of the you know countries of the world the Hilton Young Commission recommended uh, that it submitted its report in the report it strongly recommended for a central bank in the country and the commission also recommended that new central bank for India to be named after Reserve Bank of uh, India. It should be, you know, named like uh, the Reserve Bank of India. The government of India. Uh, the uh, report was submitted in the year 1926. Okay, and the government of India accepted the recommendation of the commission and introduced the bill in the central legislature on, I mean, in January 1927. See, the commission was formed in the year 1925. Commission, uh, after a detailed, uh, you know, study, it submitted the report, and in the report it gave. Uh, you know, a strong recommendation for the establishment of a central bank in the country to be named Reserve Bank of India in the year 1926. And in the, in the year 1927, the sequence of the, you know, the years uh, where events happened, 1925, the commission was formed. 1926, the commission submitted the report. 1927, the central legislature, you know, rather, the government of India, after accepting the recommendations, introduced the bill in the central legislature in the year 1927 okay but somehow uh, in the 19 in, uh, i mean uh, in in 1927 itself the bill could not be you know passed on account of some difference of opinion among the members of the house members of the legislature therefore it was postponed and uh, again uh, it was reintroduced on the basis of the recommendation of that committee uh, what is that? Uh, another committee was formed in the year 1933. The question of establishment of a you know full-fledged uh, you know, central bank for the country uh, after uh, difference of opinion among the members of the legislature, Hilton. Uh, I mean, they have postponed, they have sidelined the Hilton Young Commission's report and the government's uh, you know the bill, which they have you know introduced in the year 1927. You know, but uh, somehow it was kept in the dark in 1933. A central banking inquiry committee recommended that there is a need to establish a Reserve Bank of India as a central bank for the country uh, in order to, you know, what is that? In order to establish a clo close coordination between monetary and credit policies of the uh, you know, country as such. Therefore, need to be there to establish and as a result of the same, the bill was introduced in the central legislature in September 1933 which became an act in the year 1934 in uh, I think uh, March 1934 it became an act 
and uh, Reserve Bank of India was formally inaugurated on the 1st of April 1935. Do you understand? Uh, as per the provisions of I mean, as per the Act 1934, Reserve Bank of India Act 1934, the Reserve Bank of India was formally inaugurated in the year 1935 with effect from 1st April 1935. Okay. But uh, let me tell you, in the initial stages, uh, after the formation of Reserve Bank of India, it uh, you know, you know, functioned as a private shareholders bank, remember. Uh, but still, though it was a private shareholders bank, the final decision was in favor of, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, the control of the uh, policy of the Reserve Bank of India was in the hands of, uh, uh, you know, government of India. You understand? When the proposal to set up the Reserve Bank of India was, uh, you know, done, there was some controversy as to whether the Reserve Bank of India should it be a, you know, state-owned or private-owned. But uh, uh, there was a favor in favor of uh, private ownership. As a result, it functioned in the beginning as a shareholders bank or private owners a private owned bank okay uh, though the ownership of the reserve bank of india rests in the hands of the private individuals still the controls over the policy of the reserve bank of india was under the you know in the hands of uh, the government of india the government of india was empowered even to supersede the central board of directors of the reserve bank of india that, that itself though it was a private owned bank though it was a shareholders bank though it was the apex bank for the country the controls over the policy of the Reserve Bank of India was in the hands of the central government. And central government without being the owner, without being the owning uh, you know, the Reserve Bank of India, it was entitled to supersede the decisions or actions of the board of di you know, directors of this Reserve Bank. Okay, If the central board of directors failed to discharge their uh, you know, obligations faithfully as per the Reserve Bank of India Act, you understand? When central government was empowered to supersede the decision of the board of directors, when the said board of central board of directors failed to discharge their functions as per the you know, tenor, as per the provisions of Reserve Bank of India Act 1935 as such. And though it functioned as a private shareholders bank until 31st of you know, December 1948, on 1st January 1949, the Reserve Bank of India was nationalized under the Reserve Bank of India Transfer of Public uh, I mean Transfer of Public Ownership Act 1938. You got it? The Reserve, uh, Reserve Bank of India from 1935 to 1948 till you know 1st April till 31st March it functioned uh, like a private shareholders bank. Okay, but. Uh, uh, from 1st of April 1948 uh, you know, onwards, 1st of April 1948 onwards, uh, Reserve Bank of India, 1949 onwards, on 1st January 1949 onwards, the Reserve Bank of India was nationalized under the Reserve Bank of India Transfer to Public you know, Ownership Act 1948. The central government of the, the government of India, in other words, central government of India, acquired all the shares held by, owned by the private shareholders by paying them necessary compensation. Today, the Reserve Bank of India functions as a, in a government-owned, state-owned, you know, bank as such. Okay, uh, state-owned, not only state-owned but also state-controlled, you know, bank as such. You understand? Therefore, uh, uh, for, for nationalization of Reserve Bank of India, which uh, you know, functioned, uh, which functioned as a uh, which functioned as a private shareholder controlled bank till 1948 31st March but from 1st of January 1949 the Reserve Bank of India after nationalization it uh, you know started to be a bank controlled and owned by the state I mean the government of India as such uh, remember one more thing though uh, from 1st of April 1935 to 1948, 31st March 1948, it functioned like a private shareholders bank. Even during this regime, even when it were owned by the private uh, you know, shareholders, even if it were owned by the private individuals, uh, still the government exercised enormous clout over the functioning of uh, Reserve Bank of India. And that is the reason why, anyhow, see, uh, though de jure control is vested with the uh, uh, you know, private, uh, private individuals, but de facto control since from its inception till uh, you know this date till this date 
exercised by government of India only. Therefore, conditions were favorable for nationalization of Reserve Bank of India as it was nationalized in the year 19, you know, 49 itself. Okay. Uh, as per the act of uh, Reserve Bank of India transfer of uh, in a public ownership act 1948. As per that act, Reserve Bank of India got nationalized and came to be now state owned you know, central bank as such. The reasons for the nationalization could be like even before nationalization, as I said, the Reserve Bank of India virtually functioned like a you know a department of government of India, right? And uh, second one, in view of the need to have close coordination between the monetary and credit policy of the Reserve Bank of India and the financial policy of the government of India, remember, in order to have a close coordination between the you know monetary and the credit policies of RBI and financial policies of uh, government of India (GOI), it was felt it was felt like uh, uh, nationalization of the Reserve Bank of India is a better alternative. It was felt to have nationalization of Reserve Bank of India better alternative. In other words, it was felt to give a you know de jure recognition to a de facto you know situation. You understand? To give a legal recognition to a de facto uh, you know, control or de facto, you know, status. And three, the opinion of the Indian public too favored, in uh, you know, favored that nationalization. Why it should be? No, why it should remain like a private ownership bank? Though government of India exercised enormous control over it, still, why it should be, con you know, functioning like a private ownership bank? It is better to have, you know, uh, even uh, during the period of uh, you know 14 years, it functioned like. Uh, 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 though it was a private own, owned bank, but uh, uh, it were uh, you know controlled, supervised by the government of India only. So therefore, people felt, eh, hey, even uh, during the private ownership regime, the government of India exercised enormous control. It is as good as a, uh, it was as good as a de facto you know uh, owner. So let us give a formal recognition to that de facto ownership. Thereby, we will uh, you know make it like a. De jure. So people favored, the public opinion favored for nationalization. And even then, see, these are the four reasons why Reserve Bank of India, uh, you know, transformed from private ownership to that of, you know, government ownership. As I said, first one, even before nationalization, government was exercising control over it. Therefore, it was decided to give a, you know, de jure, you know, character to the de facto situation through nationalization. That's one. And second one, in order to have close coordination between the credit and monetary policy of the RBI and the financial policy of the government of India, it was decided to nationalize. Three, public opinion favored. Four, the world trend also then, then at that time, the world trend also was the same thing. Why? Uh, the central bank of any country should be, you know, gov uh, central government, you know, it should be owned and controlled by the central government. Why? The central government, central bank of in any country, if it is owned by the private, then uh, uh, it may lead to it may lead to some problems that may not be you know redressable at all. Therefore, it is the government being the custodian of the country, custodian of the people, their interests. So it is better to have uh, the central bank's control, supervision, etc., with the central government only. That was the world trend then. Therefore, even considering that also, uh, the nationalization was resorted to. Therefore. Uh, today, Reserve Bank of India is a state-owned institution, no doubt, and uh, uh, its capital of RBI is five crores. What is that called? Initial capital. I mean, uh, uh, RBI was started with a capital of five crores divided into five lakh shares of hundred rupees each. It was initial capital of authorized capital of five crores divided into five lakh shares of hundred rupees each. The entire capital was owned by private individuals. Okay, with the exception of the shares of the entire share capital owned by private individuals, with the exception of shares to the value of two lakh thirty thousand allotted to the central government. Okay, uh, after the nationalization, all the shares of the private individuals, private shareholders, they were acquired by the government. Now it is fully owned or central government owned you know central bank or rbi as such and uh, there is no role now as for the private you know owners or private shareholders are concerned it were all acquired by the uh, uh, you know central government as such now how it is managed so i have given you that 
uh, what was the reason for the passing of uh, Reserve Bank of India Act and uh, how you know I mean uh, uh, when it was Reserve Bank of India Act was passed uh, was it a, in a government owned bank or private owned bank we have seen that also and it's a capital now we will proceed to um, uh, this uh, management of RBI the RBI is managed by central board of directors comprising of 20 directors the RBI is managed by central board of directors comprising 20 members namely one the governor who is appointed for a period of uh, you know, five years or who will hold the office up to the attainment of uh, you know, he, 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 is, he is a full time officer governor uh, is the chairman of the central board of directors he is a full time officer he is a chief executive officer of the reserve bank of india and he is appointed uh, uh, once he is appointed he holds the office for a period of uh, you know five years okay and uh, uh, he is even eligible for he is eligible for reappointment shaktikan das is the present governor of rbi okay uh, prior to him urjit patel prior to him raghuram rajan likewise uh, manmohan singh in fact enjoyed the term for two years uh, two terms so manmohan singh the former prime minister of india he enjoyed the governorship of rbi for two terms uh, uh, but rest of them i think uh, one term each but they are eligible for appointment as a you know governors for you know they are eligible for reappointment as governor of the rbi as such okay and uh, next one uh, the central board of directors comprising of 20 members of whom one is a governor who is the ceo of rbi he is the chairman of a central board of directors of rbi and his appointment is for a period of five years a full-time officer plus he is eligible for a reappointment as well and then the four other Deputy Governors, so total 5 composition now, Deputy Governors are also appointed by the central government for a period of 5 years eligible for reappointment and uh, these Deputy Governors are also full time officer of the bank and uh, uh, you know next uh, the 4 Directors, it is here, the 4 Directors from 4, four Directors, one each from 4 local boards, we have 4 local boards, one in the west, another one in the east. West it is Mumbai, East it is Kolkata, North it is Delhi, South it is Chennai. So therefore there are four local boards, regional boards of RBI and each board comprising of five directors there. Okay, From each of the local boards, one each to be nominated by the central government to RBI, appointed for a period of four years. Okay. Then, the, uh, then ten other directors to be nominated by the central government representing various you know you know sectors um, they are also eligible for reappointment and their appointment is made for a period of four years ten other you know directors especially the trade the commerce the banking i mean those who are uh, even uh, the uh, you know renowned auditors they also could be it is up to the central government why you know these directors they must be persons of eminence in the field and when such people are appointed it would help the RBI as I said credit policy finance policy and they are the custodian of our economy the RBI so therefore being the custodian that central board of directors should comprise of jewels they should comprise of jewels and if they comprise of ordinary minds then it will not you know, help in any way that is the reason why I am telling you. Ten other directors nominated by the central government uh, giving adequate representation to all sectors and uh, from all sectors uh, ten directors, other directors are appointed by the central government uh, based on their extreme eminence in the field that is required for RBI and appointed for a period of four years eligible for uh, after the four year term completes they are eligible for a reappointment and uh, one government official nominated by the government central government who holds the office at the pleasure of the government you understand so no fixed term as such one government official nominated by the central government who holds the office for a fix, no fixed term but uh, he may hold the office for a period of uh, you know one year two year you know as uh, he holds the office for such term as the government wants that's what i said so this is how management 
one governor, four deputy governor, five, then four other directors, so one each representing the local boards, nine, ten other directors nominated by the central government, total nineteen, and one government official nominated uh, without specifying in a uh, you know, tenure as such. So total uh, twenty you know directors are appointed and uh, uh, you know these uh, you know, central board of directors to meet six times a year at least not less than one in uh, a quarter okay you should have a meeting at least six times a year see that at least once you meet in a quarter okay next uh, the four local uh, you know, boards are constituted uh, and in, uh, this uh, you know, central board of directors meeting uh, six times a year minimum not less than uh, one in a quarter, and uh, uh, they decide. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, all the. I mean, their agenda is all framed. The uh, Reserve Bank of India can call a meeting. Ne it need not be as per this. Uh, you know, number only. But this is the minimum. It is said. And uh, agenda. You know that credit policy, economic policy, financial policy, etc., etc. Where they will. Uh, you know, decide. The CBD will decide. Bank rate, repo rate. Uh, you know CRR uh, liquidity ratio. Then uh, you know, uh, I mean, uh, uh, in case of the inflation, in case of the uh, you know the dollar. I mean, uh, Indian rupee is weakening in front of the you know international currency. What all to be done? Uh, these to be discussed uh, and uh, debated in the meeting normally. Um, but uh, their agenda could also be to their agenda there could also be additions that may be you know referred to by the finance ministry government of india and uh, it is ably uh, assisted by four local boards and these local boards consist uh, are situated north it is delhi south it is chennai west it is kolkata and uh, east it is uh, you know mumbai each of the four local boards comprising of five members appointed by the central government their appointments are so made as to give adequate representation to regional and economic interest as well as interest of cooperative banks and indigenous bankers. Remember, these four local boards, they are consisting of five members appointed by the you know, central government. While appointing so, they will give adequate representations to the regional interests, economic interests, uh, indigenous bankers, cooperative sectors, etc. Correct? The members of the local boards are appointed for a period of four years and they are even eligible for reappointment. Okay, and uh, besides the local boards, the Reserve Bank of India, besides the local boards, see, head office situated in Bombay, RBI. Local boards, see, in Bombay, what all there? One head office, two. Second one, uh, one local board. Third one, two offices. You will come to know. So, Bombay is a hub of... Uh, our, uh, what is that? It's a commercial capital, economic capital of India. That much, though uh, the political capital of India is Delhi, this is economic capital, commercial capital in Mumbai. We have got uh, the central office. We have got uh, uh, this, uh, you, know, you know, local office, local board. We have got even other offices. We will see that. Uh, you have already come to know. And uh, the office of the Reserve Bank of India, the central office of the Reserve Bank of India is located at Bombay. Besides the local board and central office, it has also uh, you know, uh, offices in Bombay, New Delhi, Calcutta, Madras, Bangalore, Kanpur, Allahabad, Hyderabad, Gauhati, Patna, Nagpur, Jammu and Srinagar, Jaipur, Bhuvaneshwar, Chandigarh, Baikula, again Bombay. You know, you can see it has got in 19 other places. Remember, in India, we have at 19 other places, Reserve Bank of India, local offices. Remember, it has got a local offices at Bombay. It is there. All lo Wherever local boards are there, local offices are also there. Okay. Bombay, Madras, uh, Bombay, Chennai, Kolkata and uh, New Delhi. Anyhow. Then Bangalore, Kanpur, Ahmedabad, Hyderabad, Patna, Nagpur, Jammu, Srinagar. Jaipur, Bhuneshwar, Chandigarh, Gauhati, Baikula, that is again Bombay, and Trivandrum and Indore. I did not put, you know, name it. Trivandrum, and after Baikula, that is in Bombay, there is Trivandrum, a region, a local office is also situated, not local boards. Local boards are only in the metros, four metros. But besides, there are about 19 places where you find local offices. Of, in Bangalore, we have got, uh, in Ripatunga Road, uh, the RBI local office, okay? And, uh, 
uh, in Trivandrum and Indore. So therefore, it has even office in London, they say. And uh, uh, it, it can open office at any place in the world with the prior consent of central government or government of uh, India. If it wants, it can open the office at any place of the world. It, it can open another office also in India, but with the prior approval or consent of the central government. So you have seen that how RBI performs its functions through the central board of directors, how they are assisted. We have already seen it has got four local boards. It has to meet like that in a certain number and it is assisted by, you know, a, a local offices set up in different parts of the country. It has got 19 local offices in India, four local boards and one central office that is CBD uh, in the, um, you know, the headquarters in Bombay and Mumbai. Okay. Uh, wherever, see, I will also tell you, uh, wherever it doesn't have the local offices, in case if any state, if it doesn't have local offices, don't worry, its functions are performed. You will come to know RBI and its functions. Decentralization, let me tell you. Why, you know, Bangalore or, uh, you know, Hubballi should be, you know, waiting for Bombay head office only to, therefore, Bombay head office will, uh, you know, send the circular from time to time regarding uh, monetary, credit, uh, financial policy, okay, from time to time it will send to different offices, so which in turn will send it to the various banks, correct, right, and wherever you don't find uh, the local offices, uh, in such a case, the uh, you know the office local offices function of RBI's the lo RBI's local office functions are performed by SBI State Bank of India or its subsidiaries which acts as its agent. Okay, in case in places where the Reserve Bank of India does not have lo any of its offices, SBI or its subsidiaries will act as its agent. Okay, now let us straight away proceed to. Uh, you know, departments of RBI, it has got 10 departments like note issue department, huh? the issue department is concerned with the issue of currency notes, it arranges uh, distribution of currency notes among the different, uh, you know, centers of the country, it also keeps the accounts of various de denominations of currency notes issued, it has its offices, so note issue department, where all it has its offices in India, it has its offices, note issue offices are in India, in places like Mumbai, Kolkata, Madras, I mean Chennai, Nagpur, Kanpur, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Patna and New Delhi. I mean in all the metros you will find. First department is, you know, what is that? Departments of RBI, note issue department. It has got, you know, note issue department in seven places, including those four metros. What is that? New Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, Chennai, Bangalore, Nagpur, Kanpur, Hyderabad, Patna. So therefore, there are in all nine places in India at nine different places. Bangalore, Nagpur, Kanpur, Patna and Hyderabad. Bangalore, Nagpur, Kanpur, Patna and Hyderabad plus four you know, you know, metros. So total nine. At nine places they have got a note issue department. They distribute because there should not be a short supply of uh, you know currency notes. They will distribute. They will not the free of cost. Don't ever think they will distribute free of cost. Okay. Uh, in, in case uh, they will distribute to whom? Whatever they have distributed is nothing but a you know you know loan like because Reserve Bank of India is liable. It itself is a money. It is not a promissory note. Which one? The money. Uh, Reserve Bank of India promised in the note itself is very much printed to give the bearer 100 rupee or its value that's it so it is a currency note itself it is not a promissory note as such okay promissory note represents money but whatever currency note itself is a money you understand promissory note represents this money but the currency note itself is a money so this is being printed at a different offices in India namely there are about a nine different uh, you know places where RBI is having the note issue department uh, you know one each four metros as I said and another uh, you know five departments of note issue are located at Bangalore, Kanpur, uh, Nagpur, Patna and Hyderabad uh, likewise I mean this way 
uh, you know, note issue department, it will ensure that a you know, fair distribution of uh, you know, notes uh, will be there. And as far as the note issue is concerned, they are guided by certain principles. Okay, uh, the minimum reserve ratio, proportional reserve ratio, like. It. And then we have got a banking department. You know what the center, the, the you know RBI, Reserve Bank of India, will perform as a you know, banker to the government. It will perform as a banker to the bank. Reserve Bank of India is not only a you know you know central bank of the country, but it is also a banker to the government. It maintains a government account, okay, and uh, it manages the public debt of India, government of India, and it is also a banker to the banker. You know, it will never give even to the government of India or even to any any bank. It will never give. Oh, uh, I mean, in that case, country will never find short supply. Country will never find short of money because we have got five different, uh, sorry, nine different offices uh, uh, for note, uh, you know, printing and note issue. You understand? When nine offices are there for printing of notes, then it can keep printing all throughout the year. So there will be no question of a short of money. India can become rich. No, India will fail miserably where their money will never be valued. So therefore, you want money. See, there is a situation where country doesn't have money. It is facing, the government is not having money. It is facing a, you know, acute shortage of uh, taxes are not being collected, etc, etc. What it can do? The government may borrow from RBI. You understand? The government may borrow from RBI. Government is very sure. Government is very sure that whatever is borrowed will be returned to RBI. How? Government will collect a tax. Government will collect various taxes, duties, this, that, etc. But right now it is not coming, you know. It is, for example, what I am telling you, you imagine a corporation like uh, your Chennai Corporation or our Bangalore Corporation or Mumbai Corporation, whatever you think of. And uh, every, <coughs> their financial year will begin from April 1 to March 31st. And uh, for our uh, Bangalore BBMP, you know, they need, they will announce their budget, maybe in the month of March itself. They will announce their budget. In the budget, they, there is an estimation. The actuals will be different. Actuals to be known, I think you may have to arrive at, uh, you know, March 31st of that year to arrive at actuals but estimation budget estimation is already you know decided for the current year that 2021 20 sorry 2020 21 current year this is the budget estimation they are estimating who is estimating i said bbmp you can even imagine government state government uh, governments or central government so they propose a budget when the budget is uh, you know introduced in the parliament it means that it is an estimate that they will collect money through GST, they will collect money through duties, they will collect money uh, through various forms of taxes, uh, especially the income tax, etc. You understand? So, from every department, before preparing the budget, before preparing the budget, the finance minister will write to every, you know, ministries, submit your budget, because we have to prepare. The national budget correct and they will estimate or oh, their estimation comes to about 18 lakh crores imagine 18 lakh crore in Karnataka only we have got about 2.6 lakh crore budget they you know estimate 18 I am not getting you the exact figure I said the budget estimate that is estimated when the budget was announced 18 lakh odd crores that is what estimation. But when it comes to March 2021, that is end of fag end of the you know what is that called you know financial year, you will find a shortfall deficit. The budget deficits itself. We estimated 18 lakh crore, but it came to 13 lakh crore. Five lakh huge deficit. This has to be met. You know what I am telling you? Government can fill the deficit. How? By introducing newer taxes or by increasing newer taxes. Let me tell you, the chief source of government's revenue is by way of you know, various form of taxes. Especially in India, it is you know, oil. The crude oil. Huh? Crude oil, the government do not decrease it. Of course, there is a reason also for that. It should not be decreased. If it decreased, then you, you don't value it all. You will use it like water as such. 
and uh, uh, there will be water available but uh, you know these uh, you know petroleum or diesel oil not available such a situation may come okay therefore it is right but where it is heading in case if they find short of money one day they will think of oh let it go upwards let it go upwards 80 90 etc etc see that's what i said if there is a deficit right now deficit as i said when the budget was introduced during the beginning of the financial year but you need money government need money for carrying out whatever programs government needs money for carrying out whatever programs that is needed correct yes from where they will collect oh it has not come they estimated the government estimated in the beginning that it needs this much of money who needs it i mean uh, uh, the, the the bbmp they estimated that but they cannot wait for the taxes to come remember they cannot the bbmp or the government of india cannot wait it has to carry out the programs immediately from where where will they find money they have to go and approach rbi for loan you understand so rbi can print at its whims rbi can print at its whims but it will release only by way of you know debt or loan you understand government you want it now because you are unable to find money right now when you find money you repay but rbi will pay so note issue will be like that and not uh, uh, you know uh, uh, note issue on the basis of uh, you give this much uh, and it's equivalent value there was a system proportional reserve system in case if the government wants in case if the government wants in case if the bank wants then uh, you will have to deposit the securities uh, or valuables uh, you, uh, you have to uh, the valuables or securities of 100 percent uh, you know value they must be reliable also and you must deposit then only you will get it it is a loan you understand and when you earn you repay it and get back all that uh, you have deposited so that's what a proportional reserve ratio system for printing of notes but now they don't follow that now they follow minimum reserve ratio system where minimum reserve system of note issue was introduced in 1956 and it is continuing uh, under the minimum reserve system, Reserve Bank of India was required to maintain minimum reserve fund, a minimum reserve of gold coin, bullion and foreign securities to the value of 515 crores. For printing of notes and its release, minimum reserve system was introduced. Under the minimum reserve system, the you know uh, RBE is required to maintain a minimum reserve of gold coin, bullion and the foreign uh, you know securities to the value of 515 crores out of this the value of gold coin and bullion held by the reserve bank of india should not be less than 115 crores at least out of 515 crores the gold and bullion its value should not be less than 115 crores okay right uh, right now we adopt that and we are flexible as far as the note issue is concerned but reserve bank of india as far as the issuing of note is concerned it has to bother about uh, various uh, you know other aspects also because it should not uh, result in their note issue and the note release should not result in uh, you know um, uh, you know inflations should not result in uh, undervaluation of the currency of india as such okay right as i said even banking department uh, the reserve bank of india through its banking department uh, it performs two important functions the first deals with the government transactions second it deals with the you know public debt it manages the you know public debt uh, sorry first it deals with the you know uh, 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 government transactions it arranges the remittance of government from one place to another place it manages the public debts it arranges rotation of loans on behalf of the central and state government and uh, manages its uh, public debt as i said the government needs the money therefore uh, if it is not able to collect the taxes right now itself it may float the loan it may float the loan you understand it and pay it later because government anyhow collects the taxes and all right one two it maintains a cash reserve crr of commercial banks grants them finances etc this is what banking department and we have got another department called banking development in this banking department of banking development the rbi through this department uh, you know it uh, rather 
you know, dip, uh, through this department of banking development is concerned, uh, um, it is mainly concerned with the development of banking facility. RBI's department of banking development is mainly concerned with the development of banking facilities in the country, especially in the uh, unbanked areas or in the semi-urban or rural areas and thereby uh, it will uh, it should try as far as possible to promote the savings among the people as such okay that's right uh, thereby capital formation and economic development of semi-urban rural areas have also been you know uh, i mean are also been done then department of banking operations this is licensing department of banking operations supervises and controls the working of you know banking institution in the country this particular department, RBI is this particular department, the banking department of banking operation, supervises, controls the banking operations in the country, like it issues a license to open a new banks, new branches, uh, then uh, it regulates the amalgamation of the banks, it carries periodical inspections uh, of all the banks, it gives useful tips and advices to the banks on their uh, routine, day-to-day -day working. So this is what? Department of Banking Operations, RBI through this department supervises and controls working of the banking uh, operations. Through this department, RBI controls and supervises the working of banking institutions in the country. It issues licenses to open up a new bank. It issues uh, licenses to open up new branches uh, of the bank. Then it gives, uh, you know, advises uh, in their in the banks day to day. In a banking operations, then also it uh, regulates the amalgamations of the banks and it conducts inspection of the banks. So you can see licenses to bank, licenses to branch operation, uh, to branch openings, amalgamation. It, it, it uh, you know supervises and regulates amalgamation of the banks, conducts inspections, sends circulars. Uh, sorry, uh, that is different. Uh, conducts uh, inspections. Uh, and uh, gives advice in day-to-day -day affairs of any bank in the you know, institution in the country and through agricultural credit uh, through agricultural credit department it studies the problem connected with the agriculture agricultural credit with the help of experts it formulates the rural credit policies you know for the reserve bank of india this agricultural credit uh, department designs formulates the rural credit policies it is also concerned with the provision of the credit facilities to the agriculture of the agricultural sector of the country then then industrial finance again it is same thing industrial finance department is concerned with the provision of finance to industrial unit in the country it gives advice to various industrial finance corporations on day to day business operations exchange control as i said uh, the eighth one exchange control department what is that the exchange control department is primarily concerned with the, the control of foreign exchange transactions. Exchange control department of the RBI is primarily concerned with the control of uh, foreign exchange, you know, I mean, uh, uh, operations or transactions. The entire business of sale and purchase of foreign exchange is conducted by Reserve Bank of India through this department. Entire function of sale and uh, purchase of Foreign exchange is operated through this uh, exchange control department, the legal department. What is that legal department? The legal department of the RBI prepares, as I said, you know, uh, a, a directives and communications of the Reserve Bank of India. It also gives advice to the Reserve Bank of India for, on the proper implementation of various laws relating to the banking in the country. You understand? Through this legal cell, through this uh, you know legal department, the uh, it gives through uh, I mean this legal department gives advice to the various departments of the Reserve Bank of India. First of all, legal department tenders advice, gives advice to various department in its functioning. It prepares minutes, it prepares circulars, it prepares uh, directives, communications of the Reserve Bank of India. It also gives advice to the Reserve Bank of India on the proper implementation of various laws relating to banking operations in the country. It also gives advice to the Reserve Bank of India regarding the, the you know, impl proper implementation of various laws relating to 
uh, what all the various laws relating to you know banking laws in india maybe negotiable instrument maybe banking regulation act maybe surface act whatever it may be it gives proper information because these legislations are made by uh, the parliament and uh, the uh, legal cell legal department will give proper advice or information to the reserve bank of india for proper implementation true correct implementation of various laws relating to banking operations in the country okay banking sector department of research and statistics as i said this department of research and statistics conducts research on the problems relating to banking money credit finance production further it collects statistics and data about various sectors of the economy and publish them from time to time for the benefit of the government of india rbi etc again it renders valuable services to the government in the formulation and implementation of financial and economic policies they through this rbi through this research and statistics department through this research and statistics department it is able to conduct research regarding the problems relating to money credit finance production money credit finance productions then uh, you know what is it called uh, foreign exchange whatever whatever problems connected with this uh, the research uh, and uh, uh, statistics department is able to conduct uh, you know detailed research in order to overcome those problems to find out uh, some sort of uh, you know solution it conducts research into these problems relating to credit finance money then the uh, you know production further it collects statistics and it maintains the data about various sectors of the economy and publishes the same from time to time for its reference to the government of india understand and lastly i said uh, it also you know renders its services the research and statistics department also renders its valuable services for implementation of various credit and financial policies yeah government will be guided by but because when the uh, through this department when it maintains the statistics and data the government collects it and uh, uh, it will be in a better position to judge what best can be done uh, i mean in that period this is the statistic or this is the data available or that created some problem so on the basis of that uh, when you enter the in a present you go by the past you understand you go by the past what was the mischief in the past what was the you know prevailing situation then and what was the mischief that it was leading to and how to overcome those mischief you will be in a better position if you refer to statistics and uh, as being the custodian of our economy uh, custodian of uh, you know monetary policies therefore uh, you will be in a better position to advise Uh, i mean uh, you, uh, direct uh, the government of india the reserve bank of india as far as uh, uh, their credit and financial policy is concerned so therefore a legal department of course will uh, you know advise all the departments and it prepares the communications directives and it advises uh, regarding uh, uh, you know the proper implementation of various laws relating to banking in the country as i said so a legal uh, you know department uh, is associated in almost with all the you know department of rbi therefore rbi is having uh, there is one more non banking uh, companies department the department is concerned with the regulation of activities of non banking financial companies there are non banking financial companies where you are not expected to carry on banking operations okay uh, 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 therefore when you are licensed to carry on non banking operations you should remain in non banking operation and you should not be like a banking uh, you know institution as such so you are to be regulated so you can add one more non banking operation department of non banking operation to so totally 2 4 6 8 10 including that department of non banking operation including that you will find in all there are 10 departments uh, to assist rbi and the main goal of rbi